If you've been thinking about switching to Linux, you've probably run into a bit of a problem. The moment you search for a guide, you're hit with this tidal wave of new words and strong opinions. But what if I told you the most important first step in switching to Linux has nothing to do with choosing between Ubuntu or Mint? There's a simple step that almost everyone misses, and getting it right can save you from a ton of frustration and that feeling of being paralysed by too many choices. I'm Oscar, the super user, and in today's video we are going to talk how to actually research if you can transition your daily workflow to Linux. So stay with me, because we're about to demystify this whole process. The problem. So, let's be real. The moment you decide to explore Linux, you likely go to a search bar and type something like how to switch to Linux or how to install Linux. And what do you get back? Well, it's a lot. You're immediately confronted with all these names. Ubuntu, Mint, Fedora, Arch, Zorin OS and Pop OS. And every guide insists you have to pick one. This right here is the first and most common trap. It's all very anxiety inducing. This is good old analysis paralysis, just like when you're infinitely scrolling Netflix for something to watch. They might mention Pop! OS is perfect for gamers. And look, all of that is true, but it's also deeply unhelpful information at this stage. Why? Because it's like someone asking you to pick your ideal car before you've even learned what a steering wheel does. This initial focus on the solution the specific Linux distribution, without first diagnosing the problem, which is your specific needs, is the biggest reason people get frustrated. They pick a distro based on a vague recommendation, they spend hours getting it installed, and then realise it doesn't run that one critical piece of software they need for work. This is where the journey ends for many, but it's not going to be where it ends for you. The Workflow Audit Okay, so this brings us to the crucial step that almost everyone misses. Honestly, the single most important thing you can do before you even think about downloading a distro is to perform a complete workflow audit. Forget about distros for a moment and forget about desktop environments and package managers, all of it. Take out a piece of paper. We're going to create a blueprint of your digital life. This isn't a technical step. It's more of a personal one, and it's the key to making sure your switch to Linux is a success and not a stressful nightmare. Realize that Linux isn't Windows or Mac OS. It is different and can have different software and ways of working. So don't assume off the bat that everything you're used to on Windows will be available on Linux. You really don't want to go installing the first recommended distro you see online without making sure that you can continue operating. So the process is simple and has three parts. Part one, document your activities. What do you actually do on your computer every day? And be specific, don't just write work, break it down. Do you spend your day in a web browser using online tools like Google Docs? Are you in back-to-back -back video calls on Zoom? Are you a gamer on Steam? A content creator editing videos? Make a list of these core activities. It's the why behind your computer use. I am going to put myself as an example in this video, and you can follow along with your own use case. So I'm an English teacher who works for a private language school. So I use my computer for creating and editing documents, which includes written files, spreadsheets, PDFs, presentations, and so on. Uh, I also need to use online conferencing software to have classes with my students. I also like doing YouTube videos, as you can see, so I need to be able to edit videos, audio, and images. In my free time, I love gaming, and I have this printer, which I also use from time to time, to print colouring sheets and exercises for my children, and the occasional D&D character sheet. Part 2. Identify your essential software. Now, next to each activity, write down the specific applications you usually need to get the job done. On Windows, I used to use Microsoft Office for documents, Microsoft Teams for classes, DaVinci Resolve for video editing, Audacity for audio, Affinity Photo and Designer for image editing, Steam and GOG for gaming. So with those core apps identified, this is where you go online and start looking if these apps are available on Linux in general. Typing something like 
Microsoft Office on Linux would be enough to know. And if you know, Microsoft Office is not on Linux, so let's scratch it off our list at the moment. The Affinity Photo Editing Suite is also not available on Linux, although it seems they are considering porting it over in the near future. But right now, it's a no, so scratch that off as well. GOG also doesn't have an official Linux client yet. But Microsoft Teams, Audacity, and Steam are available. Resolve also has a Linux version, but you'll quickly find that it is a pain to install and get up and running. Uh, we'll take the plunge anyway. When it comes to hardware, my printer is a HP DeskJet 1050, and searching for HP DeskJet 1050 on Linux, I can see that it should work too, confirmed by HP themselves by using something called HP Linux Imaging and Printing, or HPLIP for short. So, what do we do with the applications that do not exist on Linux? Part 3. Research the Linux alternatives. So, even though the exact program does not exist on Linux, they are not the only program in existence. There are other commercial alternatives and even free and open source alternatives. You can search for things like Microsoft Office alternatives for Linux, and you should get some pretty good results. There are websites such as Alternative2.net, where you can also get a list of alternative apps to the ones you're using and see if they have a Linux version. So let's go back to my own example. Uh, for Microsoft Office, this is a no because it isn't available on Linux but I found some excellent alternatives such as LibreOffice and OnlyOffice. The great thing about these free and open source programs is that they normally also have a Windows version that you can install and try before even switching so you can see how it works. Even so, if I needed to use MS Office for whatever reason, the web app versions are enough for me, but I hardly ever use them. Affinity. Again, no native version. The go-to alternative is GIMP, which can do quite a lot. It isn't a one-to-one -one replacement of Affinity, but for my needs, which is mainly making thumbnails, it is sufficient. I also use Photop from time to time as well, which is a robust Photoshop clone, which is completely free online and can be installed as a web app. But mainly nowadays, I have switched over to Canva, which is just perfect for me because it saves me a ton of time and that's a web application. For GOG, there is the Heroic Games Launcher, a community launcher, which is also for Epic Games and Amazon Games, all in one, and works like a charm. And as for DaVinci Resolve, I am including it here because even though it has a native Linux version, you'll read that it is a hell to get working and depends heavily on the distribution and also your GPU. I find that people tend to have an easier time with Resolve if you have an NVIDIA GPU. I have an AMD GPU, and getting proprietary encoders up and running can be another adventure in and of itself. I am successfully running Resolve using NixOS and Arch Linux, but those are not beginner-friendly distributions at all, and they are off the table, at least for beginners. So, maybe you'll have to resort to other video editing alternatives, such as Caden Live, which is fantastic as well, or OpenShot. None of these options are as good as Resolve or Adobe Premiere, but maybe they are enough for you. If I hadn't gotten Resolve working, I would have probably used Caden Life. It's enough for my needs, and it's wonderful. Of course, your choice of software may be quite different, and some alternatives may not be good enough for you. I've seen that this is the case for people who rely on AutoCAD and other Autodesk products. There is no proper Linux alternative for those. You have FreeCAD, but if you're serious with AutoCAD, it won't be enough. If that's the case, and you don't really have a good alternative, then maybe it's not the time to switch yet for you. But most people will have a completely suitable replacement. General profiles. Only after you've done your workflow audit are you ready to actually look at distros. But now, you're not just picking from a huge, overwhelming list. You're going to match your workflow profile to a type of distro. This is how you find the right fit without all the guesswork. We can group most users into a few common profiles. Profile 1. 
the general family computer. Your main tasks are web browsing, email, watching videos, uh, some light gaming, and using Office software. You value simplicity, reliability, and you don't want to touch the terminal. The tools you use aren't important either. You just want the computer to serve you for daily general purposes. The stability level. You need something which is stable, or LTS. LTS stands for long-term support, meaning you get security updates for years without major disruptive changes. So basically you want something that hardly gets any meaningful updates. So if you think that you fit into this profile, the top recommendations are Linux Mint is probably the champion here. Uh, it's got the Cinnamon desktop, which is incredibly intuitive for anyone coming from Windows. It's polished, stable, and works great on older hardware. You can watch an overview of Linux Mint over here. An alternative to Linux Mint, in case you don't like how it looks, would be Zorin OS, which is also very easy to use. If you have a more modern computer, say from the last two years, I highly recommend Ubuntu LTS. It is another fantastic choice. It has massive community support and you get that layer of assurance with a big company behind it. Profile 2, the gamer. So workflow needs. Your life revolves around Steam. You need the latest GPU drivers, kernel updates and desktop environment features which are what matter when talking about game performance. When it comes to the stability level, you often want something more bleeding edge, or at least a distro that makes getting the latest drivers easy. That means frequent updates to get the newest features and advances. The maintenance level is then medium. As for my top recommendations, uh, these are both great for AMD and Nvidia GPU gamers. So Cache OS is probably the hottest thing right now, and for good reason. It is possibly the most performant Linux distribution. It's snappy and very game friendly, but requires a bit more learning and getting used to. Nobara is another interesting one. It has the same goal as Cache OS, but makes it easier to set up since it comes with an easy to use software store. If you don't care about squeezing a few more FPS in your games, then just go choose a recommendation from the previous profile, the family computer profile. All Linux distros are excellent for gaming at the end of the day. The middle ground is Pop OS because it is LTS, just like Ubuntu, but it gets frequent updates to the components that matter for gamers such as kernel, desktop environment, and GPU drivers. Another strong choice is Bazite, but this one doesn't really focus on extra performance. It is more about having a set it and forget it gaming station with automatic silent updates to your kernel and desktop every time you reboot that you won't even notice. The third profile, the creative professional, artists, musicians, and video editors. So as for your workflow needs, your audit revealed a dependency on creative tools. You need support for drawing tablets, low latency audio, and a wide selection of creative tools. For your stability level, this is kind of a mix, because for professional work, stable is crucial. But you also need access to modern software. Therefore, my top recommendation could be any of the distros I mentioned before, but I think if you want something easy, Ubuntu Studio is purpose-built for this. It comes preloaded with a huge collection of creative applications and is optimized for low latency audio. Fedora KDE is another excellent choice, known for being up to date and having great support for modern hardware. Both of these options support Wacom drawing tablets. Now I know that the workflow between a video editor and a musician can change dramatically, but that's where your workflow audit has to guide you. Profile four, the developer or power user. For your workflow needs, you live in the terminal. You need easy access to coding tools, compilers, and containerization software like Docker. You value control and efficiency. There are many other YouTubers with far more experience than me in this field, so you should probably go search for those. But in general, I've seen consistent recommendations here. For the stability level, this can range from stable and unfrequent updates to rolling release for the absolute latest packages. You will have to value 
what you want here. In comments from my previous videos, I've had developers who really value something that is unchanging and others who really want the latest and greatest. You will have to make up your mind there. Top recommendations here are normally Ubuntu and Fedora. They are developer favorites, offering a great balance. Uh, but for those who want ultimate control and are willing to learn and fully customize their development environment from scratch, Arch Linux is the minimalist build-it-yourself distro that forces you to understand your system. And if you want the flavor of the month, you probably heard about a distro called Omachi, which is uh, an easy to use Arch, which is custom built for developers. Maybe you can check that one out. Having seen these profiles, we now have a clearer picture of what you might want. By starting with your workflow, you've narrowed the field from hundreds of distros to just two or three perfect candidates for your needs. The test drive. Okay, so you've done the audit, you've got a couple of candidates, but there's still that fear. What if I install it and hate it? Or what if I mess up and wipe my Windows drive? This brings us to the ultimate secret weapon for any beginner, the live USB. Almost every single Linux distribution offers what's called a live environment. When you create a bootable USB stick, it usually gives you an option to try the distro. Choosing this boots the entire operating system directly from the USB drive without touching your computer's hard drive at all. So let me say that again. Your existing Windows system remains completely untouched and safe. This is your risk-free sandbox. In this live mode, you can do almost everything you could on an installed system. You can check your hardware compatibility. So does your Wi-Fi work out of the box? Does your printer connect? Is your monitor detected at the right resolution? It's an immediate way to see if the distro likes your hardware. You can also explore the interface, click around, open the file manager, look at the settings. Does the desktop feel intuitive to you? And of course, test key software. You can install software on the live environment and you have a web browser. You can connect to the internet and see if your critical web apps work as expected or download some of the alternatives you researched and test them out from the USB as well. You can create live USBs for each of your top candidates and spend an afternoon test driving them. Maybe you'll find you prefer the polish of Zorin OS over the simplicity of Linux Mint. This hands-on experience is infinitely more valuable than watching a hundred review videos, and it completely removes the fear of making a permanent mistake. If you want to know how to download and test different Linux distributions using the live environment, stay tuned for a future video where we'll do exactly that in the safest way possible. So switching to Linux doesn't have to be this big, scary leap of faith. By throwing out that conventional wisdom of picking a distro first, and instead starting with a simple audit of your own needs, you really do transform the whole process. You go from feeling paralyzed and anxious to making an informed and empowered decision. The path becomes clear. Audit your workflow, identify your essential software, match that to a distro type, and then take a risk-free test drive with a live USB. It ensures that when you finally do click install, you're not just hoping it will work for you. You already know it will. Welcome to the community. And as you'll read from time to time on Linux, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> <laughs>